universe seems to be filled with black holes so big they defy explanation. Supermassive black holes are one of the things in the universe that when you run the physics, when you run the math of how they evolve, they really shouldn't be there. It's still a profound mystery. The universe isn't old enough for regular black holes to get supermassive just by eating. So how did they get so big? The most logical answer? Black holes are born large, around one to two billion solar masses. But that's still over 10 times smaller than the largest supermassive black holes out there. Given the time scales, it doesn't seem to add up. We need some other way to make these supermassive black holes. And the question is, what is that? A clue came from a large isolated galaxy 200 million light years away. Nestling alone was a supermassive black hole with a mass of 17 billion suns. Normally, such monsters are found in dense regions of space with lots of galaxies and lots of stars. This black hole doesn't match its surroundings at all. It's kind of like driving through the middle of a desert and coming across the Empire State Building. Now, the Empire State Building belongs in the middle of a city, and a black hole this big belongs in a rich cluster of galaxies. This is the first time astronomers have found such a giant object lurking in a relatively empty area of the universe. So you've got to ask the question, if there's nothing else around, how exactly do you grow a 17 billion solar mass black hole? One possible answer is the stuff of nightmares. Maybe the story of this black hole is actually a little more scary than we thought. Maybe it's all alone because it ate all of its neighbors. Maybe it was eating more than galaxies. Maybe it was eating its own kind. The thing about black holes is they're omnivores. They'll eat anything. Anything that gets close to them, they'll gobble up. One way black holes can grow so large is by eating other black holes. So in a sense, they may be cannibals. Until recently, cannibal black holes were just theory. We'd never seen them eat each other. Then scientists detected the faint echoes of actual ripples in space-time. When engineers turned on the billion-dollar LIGO experiment in September 2015, they immediately picked up the faint signal of gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are created by huge explosions in space. To make them, you need an almost unimaginably energetic event. Something really big, like colliding black holes. A black hole merger is the most violent, the most energetic thing that happens in the universe, period. Picture the scene 1.3 billion years ago. Two black holes circle each other in a dance of death. The larger black hole pulls the smaller one inwards. Very, very slowly that orbit is decaying. They're getting closer and closer and closer. And then they will merge into one giant black hole, truly one of the most dramatic events in the universe. Finally, they collide in one of the largest bangs since the Big Bang. I would have loved to been able to safely view the collision of these two black holes up close. Imagine these two black holes as they spiral in toward each other, going faster and faster and faster and faster. And then suddenly, where there appears to be nothing or just distortions in space in front of you, suddenly there's this enormous burst of energy and everything just rings around you. By measuring the frequency of the gravitational waves, we can calculate the size of the objects causing them. When those two black holes, weighing 29 solar masses and 36 solar masses, collided, they created a black hole around twice the size. In some ways, it's very elegant and simple. You take two black holes, you spiral them in together, and you end up with one big black hole. 
The event showed that black holes can double their mass through cannibalism, almost. The final black hole was less than the sum of its parts. There were three solar masses missing. That may not sound like a lot, so let's put it in context. Our sun is burning about 100 billion hydrogen bombs every second, and over its 10 billion year lifetime, it will convert less than maybe 1% of the mass of the sun to energy. In two tenths of a second, three times the mass of the sun in matter got converted to energy in that collision. It was 36 septillion yottawatts. What does that mean? A lot of freaking energy. That's more energy in that two tenths of a second than is emitted by all the stars in the visible universe in the same time. In its first run, LIGO detected two collisions. This suggests that cannibal black holes are relatively common and that each feast builds a larger black hole. But so far, the largest black hole these mergers have produced is 62 solar masses, not even close to the largest supermasses we found. It's hard to imagine in 13.8 billion years that there'd be enough collisions of 13 solar mass black holes to build up to form a billion solar mass black hole. That's 100 million collisions. Perhaps instead, you need supermassive black holes to collide. Merging black holes almost certainly play a role in our understanding of supermassive black holes. We think that supermassive black holes themselves also merge and have merged regularly over the course of the universe. Now, whether this merging activity itself is enough to make them that big, the jury is still out on that. Now, a newly discovered type of galaxy may provide an answer. It's called W2246-0526, and we can't see it, but we can detect the heat it gives off. This galaxy is an example of a rare class of objects called hot dogs. One of the funnier terms for an exotic type of galaxy is a hot dog galaxy. And no, this is not some delicious sausage snack. In fact, it means hot dusk obscured galaxy. It's called obscured because there's so much dust and gas around it. We can only detect its heat. All this heat must be coming from somewhere. So in the core, there is a cauldron a seething supermassive black hole, the likes of which we can't even imagine. Of all the supermassive black holes we know of, the ones that are obscured in these hot dog galaxies may be the ones that are the most ravenous, consuming many millions of times the mass of the sun. Scientists theorize that hot dogs could be the offspring of cannibal giant black holes. When the monstrous black holes merge, they drag gas and dust with them. This brings more food to the table, allowing the new black hole to gorge itself. When you have these two galaxies merging, that they have all new food. It's a brand new dinner plate, a brand new buffet of food to eat. The combination of cannibalism and the fresh food allows the black holes to grow super large. Perhaps this is how the supermassive black hole at the center of our own galaxy grew when it was young. But what's the future of our supermassive Sagittarius A-star? As far as supermassive black holes go, Sagittarius A star is actually still kind of in the minor leagues. It's small, but it's not done yet. It's still eating, it's still growing. And in around four billion years, it's going to become 25 times larger because it's going to be eaten by its neighbor. 